Good morning, everybody. Um, we'll make a start. It's 10 o'clock. Um, quite a few of you are here. Um, so welcome to this webinar on Civil 3D Services, part two. Uh, just Can I just double check I'm not talking to myself as per the usual remit? Can you please let me know that you can hear me by either raising your hand in the application, putting something in the chat box, or just putting a question in? Cool, I can see lots of raised hands. So those that uh, you can't hear me, please check your speakers. My name's Ian Robinson. I'm the infrastructure consultant here at Grey Tech. Um, I say this so often, don't I? Um, uh, I need to, uh, we, we have got new marketing stuff coming out, um, uh, which I just need to update my, uh, my PowerPoint. But basically, um, so it'll all be different next time, hopefully. Um, but basically, I, I spend most of my time working with the infrastructure software uh, in the Autodesk portfolio. So Civil 3D, Map 3D, Infoworks, Vehicle Tracking, Recap, Navisworks, stuff like that. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's me. And I work for Grey Tech. Um, so we've been doing this over 30 years. So we're a well-established co uh, company. Um, and we're one of the largest Autodesk partners in the world. But we are primarily a software developer, so we write our own software um, uh, and we work with the Autodesk portfolio. But my remit is more on the Autodesk portfolio and in particular the, the infrastructure uh, side of things. So within um, our business, we've got four pillars to what we do. We create, simulate, fabricate and manage. So we work with the Autodesk portfolio um, with our power pack enhancements. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, we are still planning on doing a Civil 3D power pack. Um, I don't know when that's going to happen, um, but I think we'll probably be on our third iteration soon. I hope so, anyway. Um, we also have our simulate uh, side of the businesses, um, working with BIM structural models. And also we have a fabricate side of the business. And then finally, we have our working process, process BIM management, uh, data management uh, systems as well. So my my stuff is very much in the create phase, and in this particular webinar, we will be working with uh, Civil 3D. So in this round of webinars, um, last week I went through some really useful settings. I hope you found them useful. This week I'm going to finish up what I didn't manage to finish up. Um, on the last round, which was surfaces. Um, so if you did miss any of the previous ones, you should be able to see them on our demand, uh, on-demand portal. And you can also keep an eye on our events page um, for uh, future webinars events. These are clickable links. You're welcome to download the um, PDF of this presentation. And these are all uh, clickable links. So if you go to the handout area of the GoToWebinar software. So our past events, as I say, they're in the on-demand uh, page. So that's where you would find them on that link at the top there. Um, and uh, while you're on our page, you're welcome to subscribe to blogs. Um, uh, and again, there's a link there if you click on that here. Um, and you can go to our blogs and you su can subscribe to them. And I promise you, I will start blogging again. It's just been rather busy. If you want any more, um, we do do Grey Tech Passports. Uh, and obviously the first column here, Grey Tech Passport AEC, um, is kind of where I sit. Um, uh, Navisworks, AutoCAD, Civil 3D. And then my colleagues doing the Revit Architect Structures and MEP, uh, and also the Power Pack and Family Creation courses. They're all included in a single fee. You can go on, go on as many of them courses uh, in the year. So that's what we're uh, looking at. Uh, slightly different poll this week. I want to get some ideas from you. So let's launch the first one. Again, the first one is which software would you like to see more of in these webinars? You can tick more than one, please. So would you like to see more Civil 3D, which is what I've been focusing on recently? Um, Map 3D, vehicle tracking, Infoworks or Navisworks? So I'll just click on as many as you like. Um, okay, looking good. Three quarters of you have voted. We'll give the, oh, more of you now, 80%. I'll close the vote in a second. Okay, closing the vote now. 
85% voted, and I'll share that with you. So yeah, more Civil 3D, that's good. Um, some of you want Map 3D, excellent. Uh, vehicle tracking is a bit high up on the list, so I think I'll add that to the list, um, and maybe I'll I'll do them ones next. Uh, Navis um, Infoworks and uh, Navisworks is uh, quite high as well. Um, so if we take Civil 3D out of that, because you've all come here for a Civil 3D one, I'm a little bit disappointed uh, Map 3D and Infoworks is the lowest, but it's still a good percentage, so I'm happy with that. But yeah, I will do that. I will look at Navisworks and vehicle tracking as well. I'll, I'll focus on that. Cool. Okay, next question. I just want to get an idea of the type of topics that you want. And again, you can tip more than one here. Um, so do you just want tips and tricks? Would you like some kind of fundamental learning topics, which is what I have been covering uh, more recently? Um, any advanced techniques or just a new features? So what's new in the products? Um, I've not done a new features one for a long time. So it'll be interesting uh, to do that. Or please stop because, um, I, to be honest, I could have five questions and I ran out of things that I wanted to ask. So I'll just put please stop. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad to see nobody's ticked that. Um, somebody might be a git now. No, nobody's going to be a git. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, let's close the poll now. More of you voted this time, so thank you. Close the poll and share that with you. Uh, so tips and tricks. Okay, that's good. Um, that uh, uh, hits the top mark. I often add little tips and tricks as I'm working, don't I, in these webinars, but maybe I should kind of focus on here's my top tips. Um, uh, and advanced techniques and new features. So yeah, okay, that's good. Thank you for that. Um, slightly less on the fundamentals, but over half of you want that, so that's 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 still good. So I'm, I'm on the right tracks. So that's good. Okay. Um, now this one here, I want to know what kind of workflows you're using, and I'm talking purely about the software that you're using, not not necessarily the industry. Um, so do you work, again, you can tick more than one, do you go from AutoCAD to Civil 3D or vice versa? You know, do you always take your Civil models and put them out as an AutoCAD drawing? Uh, what about Civil to Revit and vice versa? Do you ever put Revit back into Civil? Um, Infoworks to and from Civil 3D or Civil into Navisworks or Civil with BIM 360 or the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So let's have a look. I would expect the AutoCAD one to be the highest, because um, I think everybody does that pretty much. Um, I'm looking at the others, though. Let's just keep going. We'll give you a couple of seconds more. Interesting. Right. OK, I'm going to close that and share that with you. Now, rightly or wrongly, my take on this is um, probably backwards to what you think. Um, so AutoCAD to Civil, I think, as I say, we, that, that's pretty standard, so that's good. Most of you are doing that. When you finish your Civil drawing, you'll probably create an AutoCAD drawing, or you'll start with an AutoCAD drawing and import it into Civil 3D, and then do your Civil's work in it, so I expect that. Um, nearly a third of you are going from Civil to Revit, or vice versa, and that's quite common because people want topo services in Revit, and you, want your, you usually have that in Civil 3D, so you would go that way. Um, going from Revit to Civil, some people are still doing that. Um, I generally wouldn't recommend it, but it can be done. Um, very few of you are using Infoworks. That's interesting. Um, and then Civil into Navisworks, and then a couple of you are using, 6% um, of you are using the um, BIM 360 or the a ACC. Um, my, my take from that, rightly or wrongly, and you're welcome to chastise me in the questions and chat window, um, is the ones with the lowest numbers are the ones I need to concentrate on, really, just to make sure that you've got the information and you're making informed decisions as to about whether you should or should not be using that um, uh, that workflow. Because since we've had the AEC collection, these workflows have become important because you've got access to the tools. Prior to that, we all specialised in products. Now we're specialising in, in workflows. So I will concentrate on these workflows that you're using the least, I think, and we'll see where we get. From there. And that's it, question wise. Thank you for that. Let's hide that and let's move on. 
Okay, so in the last uh, Surface webinar, we covered how to create surfaces from things like uh, 3D DWGs and LiDAR data, um, text data, as well as uh, creating corridor surfaces. And we did run out of time. I was planning on showing you how to create styles, your own styles. Um, and I wanted to show you how to run analysis on uh, surfaces as well. And we didn't do either of them, so this is the purpose of this webinar, this part two. I'm going to cover them two bits and possibly a little bit more. Uh, so if you did miss it, go to that on-demand area of our website, as I previously uh, stated, and you can go and have a look at that one uh, after this one. There's no, you know, you can, this will be recorded as well, by the way. Okay. Uh, next thing. So in this one, I'm going to start with how you make your own surface style. That's where I'm going to start and then run analysis on the surface. Uh, create things like uh, isopacks, um, slope arrows, and analyze them, watershed analysis, um, and then put a table in at the end, uh, show you how to put the tables in. Uh, that is literally a two-minute job, so uh, that won't take long. So in terms of creating your own styles, it is easy. Now, the thing to th understand here is you understand the method that you make the style for the surface. And if you understand that, Every other style, like alignments, pipe networks, feature lines, will be just such a cinch because they're all using the same kind of methods, if you like. So um, they have the same principles. It'll make life a lot easier. So I'm going to concentrate on surfaces. But in the back of your mind, always be thinking about the other things that you could be making styles for. And actually, when you've got that, you'll realize how to do all the others and it'll all fall in place. You can learn the rest uh, as you go. But again, you can put questions in the question box if you have any other questions uh, on other objects. I don't mind answering them here as well. Um, and creating isopacks, I get asked this an awful lot. Um, basically, for those that don't know, isopack maps show the thickness um, of a layer. So uh, you have contour lines that um, match thicknesses. So contours are really useful. So in your normal contours that we have in maps, their height, um, you've seen contour lines on pressure charts when you look at your uh, weather forecast and they're just lines that have the same pressure and in isopacks they're lines that have the same thickness okay so the material um, in them or the um, cut and fill would be the same uh, same thickness so it's a great way to uh, to show cut and fill uh, graphically um, so you'll see where it's greater or lesser etc um, you can also uh, um, set this up in the drawing set uh, settings uh, or you can just do it on the fly as well. So while you were creating the uh, uh, surface styles. Um, in the country kit, um, there's loads of stuff in there. And again, I'll show you both methods, um, doing it on the fly or just doing it um, out of the box uh, using the settings settings tab. Um, uh, the most important aspect um, of having any sort of an analog, can even speak, analysis on a surface or any object for that matter is to run the analysis and, and that sounds a bit weird that doesn't it, it sounds a bit daft and um, but but many people just accept when they set a um surface style up that the analysis will be whatever the surface style is set up and that's not true you need to make sure you always go and run the analysis it's vital that you do that so you can see what you're uh, showing and understand what you're showing and put a table in what you're showing etc so that, that's another important thing. And again, we'll, we'll cover that as well. Um, and when we've done, we'll just be adding dynamic tables to the drawing. Um, these tables will automatically update should the model change, um, which is really useful. So we'll just, we'll just crack on and get on with it. Okay, so I'm gonna be working on uh, this project. And what I've done here is I've used the data shortcuts just to give us um, the surface for the site, uh, the surface for the road, and the surface for the car park. And we're just going to work on, on all of these. But it's this project here, my infamous pub project in Wigan. Uh, I think you can go for a drink there now if anybody fancies it. Um, and we'll start with, when I just get this book, um, uh, surface analysis. And we'll just show you how to create a contour style surface, okay? Um, and then I'll also show you, talk about the best practice and what have you. Uh, I'll go fairly quickly. I don't want to run out of time again. But all our styles are in the settings tab of the tool space. So make sure you're in there. 
and in the surfaces so we're going to be working on surfaces but this is the same for anything alignment alignment styles you can go and create your own styles so it's any object but we're working with surfaces so surfaces surface styles and out the box you'll have most of these i've added some extra ones in here in my template i have things like existing and proposed and i will show you how you do them but it's pretty straightforward if i was to make my own style i can either right click and just do a new one from scratch or I can pick one that's close to what I want. So let's say I wanted a, a contour one. I'll just go and pick a contour one and I can copy that and then edit that one. And that's a, a useful way of doing it. I'm going to do kind of both, but effectively, if I start from scratch and do a new one in here, um, the essential principle here is the first tab is always the information tab. And in there, it's what's it called, describe it, who made it and when they made it. The next tabs, which in this case is one, two, three, four, five, so borders, contours, point, uh, grids, points, and triangles, these are all definition tabs. So these are how do we define these elements? So ignore them for now. The next two, watershed and analysis, we'll be covering that quite heavily in this. These are both analysis type tabs, so ignore them for now. You go straight to the display tab. And in the display tab, you decide what is visible. So we would decide which of these elements are going to be visible. Now, in our case, we want border, major, and minor contours, one and two. But you decide what's visible in each view direction. So this is for plan mode. Now, if I go to model mode, so when I spin it into 3D, what am I going to see? You can see that by default, it puts the triangles on. So we'd say, well, actually, yeah, the triangles give us that solid feel, but maybe I want to see the contours as well. Don't need to see the border. The triangles will infer that, um, but uh, you might want to turn them on. And if I want to see, for example, in plan mode, slope arrows, there they are, I will turn them on here. And then I can choose whether they're visible or not in 3D. You imagine you've got a surface with um, 10,000 triangles in it. That's 10,000 slope arrows. And if you have them running in three dimensions, live in a, a 3D view, and you're trying to warp it around it, your drawing is going to be a bit jerky if you've got 10,000 arrows that you're asking it to render on. So it's sometimes good to be able to say, well, in plan mode, we will have some things visible. But in model mode, let's simplify it. Let's get rid of all that complexity just so that we can see it. Once you've decided which ones are visible in both mode section by the way surfaces are just a line so they should always be just visible in section mode um once you've decided what's going to be visible you place them on a layer so borders you'd go in here and you'd find the layer and we've got one for surfaces in here it's an easy way of doing this by the way so there's my surfaces and i will look for surface border there it is that will be the layer that that goes on but you also need to make sure your model space one is on the same one as well. So you need to make sure that both in model and plan, they're on the right layer. And then the colors, by the, the best practice is to make sure your colors are by layer. Otherwise, when you take your civil model, if it says by layer here, when you take your civil model and you output it into an AutoCAD drawing at the end, you're gonna send this to your client, you're gonna send them a 3D AutoCAD drawing, when you do that, there's a, a single button for outputting as an AutoCAD drawing. Um, the border will be on that layer, surface border, so it'll be correct. It'll be the correct layer that it's on. And the color will be defined by that layer manager. And that's how AutoCAD should be. If I have the color defined in here as a specific color, then the property of that AutoCAD line that you output will be color yellow, not color by, it won't be color by layer. And that, again, is, is bad practice. So once you've set these up as they are, you would then go to the relevant tab. So for example, if you're not going to show points in plan or model, there's no point going to the points tab and setting it up because you're not showing them. It is as simple as just turning layers on and off. That's all you're doing. You imagine the way to think about it is every surface that you have, all them surface styles, the actual surface has all of these features. And the surface style manager is just turning them off or on by the layers. That's all it's doing. Very, very simple. So we would go, for example, to border because we're showing border and we'd go and set up the border. 
Now you can set the border to use the surface level, or you can flatten it to any level you want, or you can exaggerate levels by any factor that you want. So five times vertical exaggeration, for example, uh, in that. So you can set that how you want. Now, if you want to show it at the surface level, that's good. You can. The thing to note here, this is just a style. It won't change the actual data. So if I do set an exaggerated, it's just a view of it. It doesn't physically move the data five times vertically higher. Um, the data stays the same. So it's a good way that you can show where you've got very flat areas. You can show a kind of exaggerated um, uh, vertical like you would in a profile. Um, but actually, when you're working on it, the, the data is still correct. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, displaying interior and exterior borders. Uh, by default, I would normally not show an interior border. If you think about it, if, for example, I cut a hole in here where the actual car park is of my whole site, and I wanted to show the car park surface here and this surface here, where the edge of that car park is, I wouldn't want a red line, which is effectively what I'm doing. If I say turn interior borders, it's just going to draw that border, if I go back to by layer, as a red line. Now, I'd probably have a grading line or maybe a dash green line or something or a car park or a back of curb line. That If I have borders turned on for interior ones, when I put a hole in that, I'm just going to have two lines in the same place. And that doesn't make sense. So I would generally turn that off. Uh, using the datum, I've probably used that once in my, in my life. It's a little bit pointless, to be honest. Um, uh, all that does, if I was to say true and turn the border on in um in model mode just to, i'll just show you it uh, yeah if i was to um change that style to the one that i've just not done called new surface style an object view it I've turned the arrows on didn't i oh i've not set that up right i'm an idiot hang on Edit, edit, edit. Did I do that? Plant border, model border, borders, true. Oh, I didn't do that bit. Uh, project a datum, because I'm an idiot. Hang on. Does that. So it just gives you this kind of solid edge to your um, to your surface. Um, and as I say, I've only ever used that probably once in anger. Um, not something we would use very uh, very often. Um, so that's your border. Your contours, because you've turned contours on, you would choose, first of all, your contour ranges. Um, in here, you can, this is just the uh, range in here. We can set colours, for example. We can say, use a rainbow colour scheme uh, or, or, or not, if you like. So you can have different, again, like isopacks, but for heights. Uh, so you can have a different colour for each contour as they go within a, a height range. Uh, I'm not going to cover that um, in here. We don't need to. 3D geometry, again, you can exaggerate or not. Legend, uh, that's relevant when you've got these colours added in. Uh, and you just set your contour interval. So if I said base 0, 0.2 on the minor, um, and the 5, the, the major will always be 5 times. So if I went 0.5, watch the major. It's now 2.5, 0.2, it's now 1. You can override that, so if I wanted it, Every tenth contour, you can just type in a new value uh, in there if you want. Contour depressions, these are quite useful. Uh, what these will do is these will put little tick lines pointing downhill where a contour encloses itself, and there are uh, contours beneath it, so showing you where depressions are. Uh, and basically, it just puts a 10 every 10 meters around the contour, it puts a tick on it. Uh, and I would set that, say, uh, to be 0 0.5 meters long. Uh, and contour smoothing, we can add some contour smoothing in here uh, if we wanted to. Um, just say to true, and you can either add vertices and you can choose how much smoother you want them and how less smooth you want them. Uh, be very careful with contour smoothing. For existing ground surfaces, it kind of makes sense that we have a little bit smoother contours. But if you turn that up far too much and you've got anywhere with tight contours, they will potentially overlap. Now, that's a problem because if you output a drawing with a contour that crosses another contour, 
uh, you're actually outputting rubbish. It doesn't make sense to have a contour crossing another one. What you're saying at that crossing point is there are two levels, which doesn't make sense. So it will make it harder to understand the drawing, but adding a little bit of smoothing on it isn't a bad thing, particularly if the contours are wide apart, you can, you can move that uh, slider uh, to the right. But I wouldn't necessarily do that for proposed ground. So for your, your, your design, you don't want rounded contours on your road. You want nice jaggedy contours on your road. So I would be careful using that one. And you can either use it with vertices or you can spline it. Spline it is an algorithmic one, so you can't change that. It's just fixed. But adding vertices, you can choose how many extra vertices you're going to add in there. Wouldn't recommend it. As I say, for different surface styles, you would. So that's um, where you would set that up. Uh, grid, we're not showing it. Um, but there's a really good grid um, surface I'll show you in a minute. Um, well, I showed you last week with the LiDAR, uh, not last week, the last time we did the surfaces with the LiDAR data. Uh, but basically, you can have a grid and you can choose um, how that's visible. Where you would use that is in model mode. If you don't want to use triangles, you want to dumb down the data. So let's say you've got LiDAR data every one meter, um, but it's a kilometer square. You don't want to see a triangle every one meter. It will just be too much data. So you could turn your triangles off and turn your grid on instead. And on the grid one, you can say, let's have it every five meters instead. So effectively, yeah, 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 desktop. Um, so effectively, you've got um, uh, five times less data points to view in 3D. But remember, this is just the view of it. The data doesn't change. So it's just, uh, just as accurate, but it's easy for your computer to handle that. That's probably the best use of the, the grid. Uh, points, again, if they're displayed, if you turn them on, Points will be displayed at the all of the triangulation points. Um, so if you've got a survey and it has survey points in it, you're doubling up them points. Um, you could freeze them off. The only time points are really useful is they're useful when you're editing a surface. So you'll see in the country kit, there's one called triangulation and points. And the idea behind triangulation and points is so that you can edit that surface. So that's nice and easy. And basically you choose how big the points are and you can either have them using the drawing scale so they will scale according to your annotation scale or you can have them relative to the screen which is how AutoCAD points work you know when you type PD mode you get the different type of point um, then uh, as you zoom out and regen you get the points are still the same number of pixels that's what that is uh, or you can just say absolute unit so I would like my point to be 0.5 meters big then you can choose how that point looks. So maybe you'll have it like so. Um, you can also choose derived points as well and uh, non-destructive points. Uh, so these are relevant for, um, you know, when you put a surface border in and there's a tick box for non-destructive, um, it will create these non-destructive points, which is basically re-triangulating according to the, the border. It will re-triangulate to that border. Uh, and it will add more points into it, and you get a different point symbol for that. That's all that's for. Triangles, they're the raw data. It's a tin surface, a triangulated irregular network, so they are the raw data. And in there, uh, you can choose just to exaggerate or flatten uh, in there. Now, in the UK country kit, these are all set up for you, so you don't need to, to worry about that. Uh, watershed analysis, I'm going to cover in a minute, so we'll come back to them. So once you've decided what's visible, gone to these and set them up how you want them set up, you would then give it a sensible name. And I would um, put in there probably my company name or my initials in this case or whatever. You don't even have to do that. Or I often, pre when I'm doing company um, templates, I'll often prefix all their styles with their company initials, just so you know which ones came with the country kit and which ones have been designed. By the, uh, by the by that company, um, but you give it a sensible name. It's all going off today, isn't it? Um, you give it a sensible name, you know. So I would call this one Contours. Not point two. Uh, one point zero with arrows, etc. Give it a sensible name, and then you can describe it as well. But essentially, that is the the kind of principle behind it all. And it's the same for everything. You go to the information tab, decide what's visible, and then go and set up them visible components and ignore the ones that are not visible. And it's as simple as that, okay? Um, 
what I would do if I was working um, with, say, um, contour drawings, because you're going to do contours the most, I think. That's the type you're going to make. We're going to cover these ones on here. So I would just pick one that's close to what I want, right click and copy it. And that's the better way of working. So, for example, I've got one here, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. Um, I'm going to, um, 0 0.1, 0 0.5 proposed. I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to make it 0 0.1, 0 0.5 proposed. Now, before I do that, I want a proposed and an existing. Before I do that, I would go to my layer manager, go to surfaces, and I would create the layers that are relevant and set the colors up. So I've got the um, surface major contour existing ground and the surface major contour proposed ground. The easiest way to do that is just to copy that. You just copy, control C, create a new layer, control V, and then put in the word, you know, EG for argument's sake. And then you would go and change the color. That's the, probably the easiest way of doing that. Let me uh, delete that layer though and do it. You can see I've already done it. I'm trying to make sure I get my timing. So I don't, don't lose time, okay? So then I would just go and find one that's close to what I want. So I'll right click and copy it. And the beauty behind doing that is if I go straight to the display tab, these are all already set up. So it's already on the right layer. So I don't have to worry about that because in the country kit, we did all that hard work for you. So I could just go straight to here and rename it. So I'm gonna call this one 0 0.1, 0 0.5 proposed. Proposed. Wasn't made by Autodesk, it was made by me. Uh, borders not 0.1, not 0.5. Uh, I'm going to put triangles and contours. I'm going to change it in 3D. Proposed ground. Um, adding this info, if you actually look at any of the Country Kit ones, Joe, who writes Country Kit, always puts quite a lot of information in the description. It helps you massively. So then we'd go to the display tab and choose what's visible. <clears throat> so on, in plan mode, we're happy with major and minor contour. We're just going to change the layer to proposed. There it is, proposed ground. And this one, we're going to change the layer to proposed ground. So you can see that these are now proposed. Um, you need to then go into model mode and turn on the layers you want. I want to see the contours as well. And you'll see there's the major contour. And again, I'll go to proposed. The minor contour, again, will go to proposed. That's it. Uh, in section mode, they should be switched on. It should be just on surface section, so we don't need to do that. So we just need to make sure our border, our contours, and our triangles are set. Triangles in that mode there. So we've got to border, uh, use the surface level, turn off interior borders. Uh, don't need a datum, so I'm happy with that. Contours. Uh, they're already set to 0 0.1, 0 0.5, so I'm happy with that. But let's put on depressions as well. So we'll turn them on, so we'll see where the depressions are. Set that a bit smaller. And um, if it's proposed, you would always turn that to false. You would never turn that on. So I'm happy with that. If I wanted different coloured um, um, contours, we can come back to that later. Uh, so we're not showing grids, we're not showing points, triangles we're showing, and we're using the surface level, so we're not going to vertically exaggerate. So I'm happy with that. Hit OK. There it is. So let's go and change our style to that new style. So that is 0 0.1, 0 0.5 proposed, and there is our contours uh, in there. Okay? Let's see all the contours. These lines, these are these lines showing me that that is a depression. Okay, now if I look at that in the object viewer, it'll be exactly what you expect. It's a blooming big, big old. That's why they were showing as a depression um, in there. So that's quite useful. And there's my contours every 0.1 of a meter. So pretty straightforward, but that's the best practice. Always use your layer manager. And the beauty now is in this drawing, when I output it as an AutoCAD, or if I'm using it uh, in here, I can go to the layers and change the colors, change the thicknesses, change the line weight, change the transparency. And it will universally do that for all the styles that are using that layer. And that, that would be what I would um, consider um, the best practice. Right, let's have a look at the banding style. So if I wanted to show this as a 
different style. We know we can change it in here. So I'm going here and say, uh, in my properties, let's do solid level banding. Okay, so I want to see a solid level band. So we'll have a look at that. And then you just accept this default style here. If we go and have a look in it, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, maybe six bands or something in there. It is what it is. Okay, but let's do it from the surface properties, solid level banding. And this is what the analysis tab is for. It's for setting up these colors here. So we would go to the analysis tab. Oh, let me just show you what that's what that looks like. We go in here, you go to display, it's showing the border in 2D, and then it's showing this levels map. And then in the model, it's showing just the triangles, because that's 2D. Okay, that's all it's doing. Um, on the analysis tab, that's where this is set up. So whatever that default is, it will be set up in here. However, we need to go and set it up for every drawing. So for every surface that you want to analyze, you need to go to this analyze tab and set it up. But the kind of default here, if I go to levels, you'll see the default is to do a 2D solid. Alternatives to that is you can do 3D faces or hatches or meshes. Um, the range interval is five. It's using this um, uh, range interval with datum. Above the datum is land. I think that's this color here. And then there's hydro below the datum. It's not properly set up how we want it. Let's just cancel that though. We'll, we'll set our own up later. If we go to the analysis tab, you choose what you're going to analyze, which is levels. By the way, if you're using American English, yours will say elevations. Don't worry, it's the same thing. You then choose the number of ranges and you also choose how you're going to range. So I'm just going to do uh, range, uh, number of ranges, and I'm going to set that to say eight. And then you must hit this button. And there it is. There's the color set up correctly. And it gives you what the ranges are. So you can see up to 51, and then it's every one meter, all the way up to 58. So if I OK that, we will get a much better range. Let's go and change it to something else. Let's go and change it down to four, rerun it, we get less. You can see there, just four colors. And you just go in and always run this. Great, we'll do 85 in, that'll go completely mad. And there's the extra ranges. Now, one thing that we can't do, and it's a bit of a pain in the bum, I am aware of this, um, is we can't uh, easily change them colors. We used to be able to go into the program data folder and find the palette file, which was just a text file, and edit that, but that seems to have disappeared. I looked at it probably last six months ago, and I need to maybe... Um, uh, maybe look at it um, uh, again, really. Okay, so um, let's have a look at um, Isopax. Just, uh, what was doing on this one? Let me just see, what is that one? Uh, I've just realized. It's the pub site one. Yeah, okay, let's have a look at uh, Isopack. So I'm just going to turn that one not visible. So no display. And again, for those of you that aren't aware, the no display is on everything in the country kit. If I just edit that, it's very simple. On the display tab, everything's turned off. It's as easy as that. Okay, so we've now switched that one off. And let's just bring in um, a... Um, Analysis. So if I go volume surface, pump site, uh, pump site earthworks. Okay. So I'm just going to bring that in. I'll leave it triangle so you can see it. So this is the cut and fill model. Okay. The earthworks, you can see that it looks a bit weird. So it goes down in this area here. Um, um, because there's greater, greater cut and fill. So I want to show that as an isopack drawing. So we can create an isopack one, and the nearest one to that is solid level banding. Here we are, solid level banding. So I'm going to copy that one. I'm going to rename it. Um, let me just see what numbers. Um, yeah, we'll go one meter one meter 
Okay, it was made by me. Right, okay. Um, we go to the display, choose what's visible, so border and levels, and in model mode, we will just see the triangles. Okay, and I'm happy with that. So if we're gonna show these levels, we just go straight to the analysis tab, go to levels, and let's say we're gonna do range interval with datum. Okay, and above the color, above the datum, so remember the datum is where we've got zero cut and fill, and above that will be in fill, so we'll go greens. And below the datum, datum being zero, we will go reds. So we'll have different colored reds the deeper we go, and different colored greens the higher we go, and we'll set the range interval to one meter, and we'll do that 2D solid again. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's crack one meter, and let's go and change its style to that one in that. Now, even though I've set all that up, I still need to go to the surface properties and run the analysis. You'll notice there's a hole there. And that happens sometimes as well. You're like, why is there a hole there? Basically, it's out of the range. So if I have a look at the properties of the surface, and you'll see minimum level is four, so near enough minus four and a half, and maximum level is just over five. So let's go and look at the surface analysis. Levels, uh, we'll set it to eight, and we'll do with a datum. Datum zero, one meter, that'll be better. And there we go, okay? So let's rerun it, and it's minus five to plus six. And we'll hit OK, and that will fill it in. And there's your isopack drawing. Basically, in 3D, it's still a 3D model. Okay. Now, if you wanted that to show in 3D, then you could create an isopack in 3D. So if I copy that one, and I'm going to go isopack one meter 3D, in the analysis, we could say, instead of using 2D solid, we're going to use 3D faces. We can have it in 3D. But of course, uh, we would need to display in 3D them levels. Okay, so let's go and change that style to a 3D style. So we'll go, let's pack 3D. There it is. So it's now showing 3D faces. So now if I look at it in the object viewer, you can see, let's change it without the edges. Shaded, <laughs> not realistic, shaded, shaded. Oh, my uh, graphics card's gone a bit wonky, isn't it? Let's do that again. Uh, object view it. Yeah, graphics has gone a bit wonky. Uh, unless I'm showing something else, anybody notice anything? Just edit it from here. In model mode, oh, it's because we've got the triangles on. That's my mistake. There you go. There's your, your 3D model of your isopacks. So you've got varying bands depending on how deep you go, uh, how high you go, and varying in bands depending on how deep you go. And that's it, simple as that. Just create that isopack drawing. Right, next one, very quickly moving on, road analysis. Um, now, with a road analysis, we would usually use contours and arrows, but you can do a little bit more than that. So let's go in here and say, let's set that up to 0 0.1, 0 0.5 with arrows. So you can now see all the flow arrows on our road, and we can analyze that. Now, the question is, we could analyze this and say, show me all the arrows that are particularly slopey or show me all the arrows that are not particularly slopey. Basically, show me flat spots. I want to know which channels have got fast moving water and which channels have got slow moving water. That's essentially the question I'm asking. So again, we can go into the analysis for this analysis and we can go and find slope arrows. There they are. We can set our range to, I don't know, four and rerun it. Now out the box, that's what happens. You're like, whoa, Ian, what's going on there? Okay, let's set it to six, run six. Still only two. Let's go to 10. Still only two. 25. Something weird going on, isn't there? So let's go and have a look at it. I'm just gonna go and edit that. Now, in all styles, 
So I, yes, you saw me going into the settings. We can also, when you're in the properties of any object, whether it be an alignment, a feature line, or a surface, you can go into the surface style manager here. And I can either just create a new one from scratch, copy this one, or just edit it. So I could copy using in the settings like I showed you, or we could just copy from here. So while you're working, you can do it. I'm just going to edit this one and have a look at what's going on. So if I go to analysis and slope arrows, choosing equal interval, maybe quantile would be better. And we'll just set that as a default five. Um, and the arrows, let's make them a little bit smaller. This is where you choose how big the arrow is. So let's go 0.5. And we'll hit OK. And then re go back to analysis, set that to five and rerun it. Oh, we got four. Six. We got six. Weird, isn't it? We're not sure, or I'm not sure, exactly what's happening here. But when you set it to quantile, it is definitely better. Um, but something's going on in that analysis that it's not liking. So now we can just go and set them up. So let's say uh, below 1%, they'll be red. So that's where we've got slightly slower um, running uh, on our surface. Let's say between one and five, it's green. Between five and 15, it's blue, fast moving. And between 15, now this big number here um, uh, will be either um, errors in the triangulation. You've got a near vertical triangle there, uh, which is what that's likely to be. Or if it's around the kind of 400 mark, that will be the fascia of your curbs, you know, your battered curbs. So um, if you want to remove the arrows on these areas, just put a smaller number in. So 51 will be the batter on the side of the road. So they're purple. You hit OK. And basically, you're looking for green arrows. They give you nice ones. Um, and there's a slower channel. So that's a below 1% channel. So I'd maybe need to analyze that. And again, we can analyze that can't be very simply by adding slope labels and just playing around with them slope labels. OK. Uh, I'm going to change it to percentage, just so you can see it. Okay, so we have got not too bad. It's not horrendous, is it? Um, and then where we've got blue arrows, we've got slightly faster. And then the purple arrows is where the, uh, um, this is where obviously we're going into the pub, which is quite a steep climb into the pub on this design. I think the end result isn't. Um, you've got your purple arrows, same on the batter where you've got your one in two slope, you've got your batter there as well, okay? So yeah, so we can now see where we've got faster moving, slower moving, water, and obviously my channels here are quite small because it's pretty flat, is that area? Totally flat. So we could look, go back and have a look, couldn't we, at the profile for row two, there it is, and that's why it's horizontal. Um, if I was to move this, like so, let's say I was to do that. Okay, so it's now no longer um, horizontal and uh, rebuild the corridor and save it. Providing I'm not using the, I hope that's the same one. Let's find out, <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? Yes, it is. So I'm gonna synchronize. And you see that immediately changes, okay? So we're now got a nice fast moving slope on there, on there. Makes sense. Cool, right, okay, last thing, watersheds. Um, uh, let's just leave that on. Okay, now watershed analysis is a bit quirky because you do need to set this up every time. There's no out the box. Yes, we have in our settings, Yes, we have under surfaces and surface styles, we have one in the UK country kit called watershed. If you were to change that style to watersheds, so let's go and do it, it just disappears. And that's because you have to run the watershed analysis. So the first thing you'll do is you'll go into surface properties, you'll go to analysis, you'll change it to watersheds and you'll run it. And that will bring it back. However, hit OK, you end up with that. And your first question is, what the hell am I looking at? I don't understand what I'm looking at. So let's go and de de demystify watershed analysis so you understand how it works. I'll do it from the surface properties and we'll go into here and we'll just go and edit that one. 
So in here, um, all they've done is on the display, they're showing the watershed analysis. Uh, in 3D, it's showing just the triangles. I'm OK with that. Uh, in the analysis, we go to, uh, sorry, in the watershed tab, we go in here. OK, and you've got these boundary point watersheds, boundary segment watersheds, depression watersheds, flat areas, multi-drain and multi-drain notches. And you want to know what they all are. Just go straight to the help file. In fact, do a search watershed would be easiest about watersheds. And there they are about boundary points, boundary segments, depressions, flat areas. So what is a boundary point watershed? Well, it gives you all of this information in here. And it says in the following illustration, point five is a boundary point watershed. So you can see this water here on these triangles will flow across this and it'll end up coming out here. So the question you have in your style manager is how do you want that to look? OK, um, with the boundary point watershed, you can get it to hatch all of this area and you can get it to put a point there. This one here, where you've got lots of triangles running across a boundary, that would be called a boundary segment. And what do you want to happen along here? Do you want to draw a line along there to show where the boundary segment is? And do you want to hatch? all in here. Um, depression watersheds, if we go in here, it says in the following illustration, point eight and nine form a depression. There's eight, there's nine, and you can see every, the water just flows into that. So how do you want that to show? And the idea is you probably want to hatch that whole thing here. That's the idea. So always use that help file so you understand what they are. First of all, let's just start up with 3D geometry. Yes, we're gonna use the surface water. Secondly, we can choose how big the points. Out of the box, they are blooming massive. I'm going to set them to one meter. On the surface tab, you can choose to put labels in. And there's one there for ID type and area. Let's just edit that and have a look at it. So you'll see in here, in the layout tab, it's going to put in the surface watershed ID, the type of watershed it is, so we'll know if it's a depression or whatever. Um, the watershed area, so that will be meters squared uh, as well. So that's quite useful. Uh, other stuff you can add in there, none. It's just them three elements. So that's going to give us everything. Uh, what I might do here, though, is just turn off the background mask and turn on the border. So it looks like that. Okay, so it'll say ID 9, and it'll tell you the depression and the area of it. So that's quite nice. Let's go with that. Uh, legend, there's a catchment area legend already made for you. And basically it just says ID type, where it drains into if it's relevant. Description, uh, segment, what's that? Display, oh yeah, it shows you what the what, what it's showing, what hatch, um, and area to display. So I'm happy with that. Uh, now we go and set up what the boundary point is going to look like. So it says here on the boundary, it's going to put a red Continuous line, so it'll draw a line that's continuous, and the hatching is turned off. So let's turn the hatching on. So boundary point hatching will be red. If you want it a different colour, so if I hit the colour marker there, I can choose it. So let's go with green. Uh, in fact, let's go a bit darker. So 92 uh, on there. And then do you want it to draw where that point actually is, the target drain? And I'm going to say yes to that. Uh, we can choose our marker. So you can have whatever marker you want in there. Um, so a boundary point one. Yeah, that one's reasonable. Circle. And again, I'll make it the same. Uh, no, I'll make it uh, a lighter colour. So we were 92. We're going to go uh, 91. OK. Boundary segments. They're going to be blue. I'm going to make them um, a different green. Uh, it's going to be continuous. Um, these hatches, generally, they're not, they don't fully work. There's a weird thing going on, and I think it's to do with the scaling. I've not managed to get the scaling um, precisely right out the box yet. Um, if you use your measurement command and change that to Imperial, they seem to work better than if you leave them in metric. So I'm wondering if they were originally created in Imperial, the hatches were um, uh, incorrectly scaled. But you can add this scale, but it doesn't seem to do much, I've got to be honest. Um, we can also draw the segment, so it'll draw a, red, a line, and we can choose that colour, so it'll be a magenta line. 
Depressions, let's go blue for depressions. So let's show uh, where depressions are. Again, we'll hatch it. I don't think this will work um, with the hatches, but let's go with um, that one. <laughs> Can't get that scaling to work. And we'll also draw a point, and this time we'll change its style. And then the target point color needs to really kind of contrast that. We'll make it light blue. And again, you can draw the segment as well. Uh, then we've got flat areas. You get the idea. You can set them up. Multi-drain watersheds. Let me turn everything on. So it's going to do yellow for flat areas. Uh, we've already got red, haven't we? Did I change it? Yeah, I did. So red is uh, multi-drain notches. Um, and again, these multi-drain notches, what the idea of them is, so multi-drain notch watersheds, basically the water can go out of either end, you know, so it can either come out here or come out there. It's got a 50-50 chance. Um, and that's what these multi-drain uh, notches are all about um, and multi-drains. Uh, and again, we'll just turn all these on. Turn all these on. Oops. Uh, we've already got green. I don't want to have green, so I'm going to go kind of orangey brown. And for that, we'll go dark brown. So, okay. So that's you setting them up. Now on the analysis tab, when you run your watershed analysis, rerun it, you'll see the colours have now all changed. You are welcome to go in here and change any of them. So I'm going to this one and just say that particular one, I'm going to highlight and change its color, or I can change its line weight, or I can change its line type. So you can choose all of that. Now the trick here is not just to okay and turn everything on, because it just becomes a, a mass of information like this. What the idea is in here is you use this button here to show what you want to show. So if I just want to show where the depressions are, boom, boom, turn all them off, okay? That will just show depression. So now I'm analyzing this with depressions. If I wanted to show just the boundaries, go back in here and say, okay, let's show the boundaries. Hit okay, hit okay. And we'll just see the boundary. So there is a point and a segment where it, uh, the boundary goes. Oh, one other top tip, where you've got these labels, if you try and pick a label, it won't let you pick a label. I want to move that label because these are overlapping and it won't let you pick them. Uh, use control click. So if I control click on a label, I get a grip that allows me to move it. There it is. So control click on that label and that will allow me uh, to move that label. Okay. Um, you do have to do it on all of them. Uh, like so, control click, control click, I'll pick both of them at the same time, like so, uh, and then of course if I turn on the map, or if I had any other data, obviously I've only just brought the surface in here, and we can see where we're going to, where we're being with it, okay, let's go and turn on the others. Oops, watersheds, turn them on. So we've got our boundaries. Let's do our depressions as well. And there's our area. So you can now see where water is flowing to. These are the low points. That's where water would potentially flow off site. Um, I've got a curb line running there, so it's not going to hold it there. So we need to drain along there. No point draining on the other side. And same here, all this needs to drain into that area. This needs to drain into that area. So that's how you would work with um, your watershed analysis. Just be a bit smarter about it and turn on and off the bits that you need um, as and when you need them. And of course, you could have watershed boundary only style and just turn all the other stuff off. You could have one watershed um, um, notches or, you know, you can have as many styles um, as you want. And for the first time in history, it is one minute to 11. I think I've, I've hit time, haven't I? So that's how you create surfaces. Does anybody have any questions?
You're welcome to ask them. Oh, we've had one already. Hang on. Yep, yeah, I can show that how to add um, uh, slope labels on plan, um, please, with arrows and grades. So what you meant was uh, that one there. How did we get them with the different grades on it? Just say yes or no. Are, you, are we talking about when I did add label, slope, one point, and I placed it there and it's showing us one in whatever. There is a style in the country kit called percent slope. So you can have it showing us percent slope or grade just with that style. So if that's what you meant, that's what I meant. Yeah. So yeah, just change the style. Um, other top tip here, if you wanted to automatically put that in, that style, if I went to surface commands and looked for the command for adding that, then you can change that command. Um, add contour labeling, break line, slope label, there we are. You could say, so every time if I go default, and there it is, I can change that default to percent. Do do. Now, every time I add a slope label, it will be percent. Like so. Or another top tip, rather than going into the settings, if you just do the top add labels and go surface slope, you can choose it here. Now in this drawing, always it will do rise and run, even though I've set that to, uh, one there. So if I go in there, add, oh, one point, place it there, like so. Now, if I was to select the surface, add label slope, uh, one point, it's maintaining that because you've changed it in here. So that will allow you to change that uh, slope label as and when, um, uh, just using that tool there. Okay. Uh, right, next one. Is it possible to divide surface automatically into pieces by polylines? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Is it possible to divide a surface automatically into pieces? You mean you want to split a surface? So let's say you've got that surface that surface there. You want to get a polyline and say, I just want one surface here, one surface here, and one surface there. And the answer to that is yes. Um, if I had a polyline to describe where I had my surface, let's say I just want a surface here. Close it. And then I want a different surface and snap on here. Um, I'm trying to work out if this is what you mean. So, okay, uh, one option is to create your two surfaces. Just thinking off the top of my head here, let's call this one north, leave it triangulated, create another surface, call it south. Like so, let's turn that surface so it's not visible. Okay. So what we can do here is in our north surface and in our south surface, under definition, you could add the boundary in advance. If you add the boundary in advance, it's data click. That one, is that what we're doing north, yeah. And then in the south one, I could do the same, add boundary, do it as a data click. Okay, and then just paste in the surface. So right click paste. And we'll paste in the pub site. Oh, it didn't do it. Huh, that's interesting. You should have done that as a data clip. Didn't like it. Uh, when you're pasting services, you can't use data clip. Okay, that's fine. Let's delete that. Ignore the data clip thing. Delete, delete, delete. Uh, let's just add the boundary in afterwards. Uh, non destructive. And we'll pick that one to the north one. And then paste in the surface. For the pub site, and then add the boundary in. Yeah, of course it doesn't. Uh, it won't do the data. The data clip is for when you're importing data. And there we go. There we've got two surfaces, one for the two different ones. Um, so that's that. If that's what you meant, dividing into pieces, 
Well, automatically, no. I don't think it does. There is a way of doing that automatically, unless I can think of one off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, you can do it. The advantage of doing it that way is I still only need to manage the other surface. Because if I change that other surface, so if I was to change um, my design surface, this one here, I can't in this case because um, it's, uh, yeah, it's locked uh, because it's um, a data shortcut. But yeah, if I was to change that surface, it would change all the other surfaces as well. Okay, next one. I've done ice packs using existing survey and proposed carriageway design. I have done ice packs using existing service and proposed carriageway design. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. So you create a surface that merges the two together, or you create a surface that um, defines the difference between the other, which is what um, uh, I did with that um, volume surface. So that's uh, comparing the existing ground to the proposed ground, and then you get your, you can do your isopacks on that. And that makes the most sense. Um, same with that row. There's no point. Yes, I could set that, and, and you could say it looks like Isopax. So I could, uh, tell me what, let's just go in here. I could do it just by levels, couldn't I? So solid level banding, analysis, levels, eight, boom. So that just gives me uh, the levels. And you could almost say, well, they look like Isopax. Yeah, they're exactly the same thing um, as Isopax. But of course, Isopax specifically to define thickness of things. That is defining an elevation. So it's just a, an elevation coloured map, a thematic map, if you like, of the drawing. Um, if I wanted to do a, um, an isopack of the road, no display, um, I would do that using my formation surface and the comparison between the two. I think I've already done the volume surface. Road, earthworks, yeah, I have create a reference. So I'll go and bring them in as solid level banding. So, hit OK, hit OK. So there's my road, and then we'll go and set it up. This is just the earthwork, so this is the cut and fill uh, on your on your road. Uh, levels, eight, boom, like that. And there is an isopack. Or actually, you would do interval, wouldn't you? Oh, 0.5, what does that look like? Oh, oh it's very, very steep. <laughs> One, let's go, and, uh, let's go five, see how many, yeah five meters um, and that would give us that ah I know why the problem there you will get this occasionally if we have a look at this um, I've got a little blip there see that so that's going way way down you can override these when you've got something like that you can see there look it's starting at minus 64 um, if I go back in um, Basically, you need to work out what your maximum and minimum is likely to be. And you can just override them and type in what you want in here. Um, so we're going from one. Let's go. Um, let's go minus two. Oh, we have to delete all the others, don't we? Let's, uh, let's not do 13. Let's do five. Okay. Um, and basically, we'll go from one. You have to do it this way. Oh my God, wrong way. Uh, 0.5, and then we'd go 0.5, down to zero, and then you'd go zero to minus 0.5. Then you go minus 0.5 down to minus 0.1. So you can override, oh, minus, minus, minus one, isn't it, idiot? You can override all of that. You can see in there that it's colouring in just the areas that fall within this range, okay? So, yeah, you can override that to, to whatever you want. But, yeah, that's how you do an isopack uh, drawing uh, on here. And, again, if I put the map on, you'll see the road underneath. There you go. So that's where you've got most cut and most fill. Okay. Okie dokie. Right. Uh, that's it. No more questions, I don't think. Um, we're done. And um, people are having to go for a meeting, so <laughs> no problem. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I'll, uh, yeah.
I'll take in, into account what you did last, uh, what we um, looked at um, in the in the replies, shall I say, um, to where's my PowerPoint there? Uh, the replies um, to the uh, poll that I added earlier on, and the next webinars will be in the next quarter. I'll try and get four in, and I'll try and cover the topics that you've asked me to cover. So again, thanks again, and uh, see you soon. All right, cheers, bye.